Hello everybody, my name is Jem and welcome to my new basic probability series. Now if basic probability is all that you need, great, you're in the right place. But I do have to admit that I designed this series for graduate students in mathematics and statistics. Now, the reason I did this is because people in these sorts of programs can be very mathematically sophisticated, but come in with the wrong background. And often the case is a zero probability background. So this is gonna be basic, really basic. But if you stick with me through this and into the next series and the next, we're gonna study mathematical statistics and measure theoretic statistics, Markov processes, stochastic processes, time series, we're going to study MCMC and stochastic simulation and more. So what are you going to learn in here? It's going to be really basic. We're going to start by flipping a coin, then maybe rolling a die. And we're going to talk about some basic probabilities that you can compute through counting. Then we're going to talk about more advanced ways to count things. Then we're going to talk about Venn diagrams and how they're actually useful and not just a, a stupid exercise. Uh, you can get a lot of information out of a Venn diagram. And then we're going to talk about conditional probability and the law of total probability and Bayes rule. Then we're going to define random variables. We're going to talk about probability mass functions, probability density functions, expectations, variance, covariance. We're going to talk about all of the major distributions, the Bernoulli, the binomial, the geometric, the other geometric, the negative binomial, the other negative binomial, we're going to talk about the continuous uniform distribution, the exponential distribution, the gamma distribution, the normal distribution, the Pareto, Cauchy, and Weibel distributions. And we're going to talk about all sorts of properties of these distributions and how they connect to each other. Now, my goal is to keep these videos very short. I envision this to be a probability sort of snippets kind of course. Uh, I imagine they're going to creep longer and longer, but I'll try to keep it in check. So let's do this. So I'm hoping you have a sense of, a really basic sense of what probability is. Let's flip a fair two-sided coin, heads and tails. Let's flip it in a random way, not with a spatula. We're gonna flip it once. And I wanna ask you, what is the chance or probability that you will see heads on the coin? Now the answer is one half. And the reason it's one half is because if you flip the coin over and over again, you will see heads half of the time, approximately half of the time for a finite number of flips, and it gets better and better and closer to one half as the number of flips increase. So this may not seem relevant to you because you're flipping it once, but look at it this way. Suppose you are approaching a new, exciting new table game in Las Vegas, and you have a little bit of money with you, and you're not a gambler, uh, but you wanna try this out. So should you put all your money down? What if I told you the last 98 out of 100 people won the game? That really has little to do with what happens on your game, but it tells you that you have a better chance because there is this long run frequency sort of thing going on. So the result will be heads half the time. And I'm going to write that like this. I'm going to use a P for probability. And right now I'm writing the word heads in there equals one half. So let's kick it up a notch. Now we're going to roll a fair six sided die. And I want to know the probability that we're going to see a four. So same idea here, because all of the sides are equally likely, and uh, I just used up my quota of air quotes for this video. So I'll try to, I'll try to not do that again. But because all the sides are equally likely, you're not more likely to get a four or a two, then there are six sides and your chances of getting a four is one in six or one sixth. So, Right now I'm writing it out in English. The probability you get a four is one sixth. Now let's try to generalize this notation. We're going to use capital Roman letters, A, B, and C, things like this. You can use any letters you want, but usually they're capital to denote sets or events. So if you roll a fair six sided die once and you let A be the event that you get a four, now I can write this a little more compactly, not much, but the probability that the event A happens is one sixth. 
The sample space of an experiment consists of all possible outcomes. So in the coin flipping experiment, what can you get? You can get heads or tails. In the rolling a fair six-sided die experiment, you can get one, two, three, four, five, or six. So I'm using these curly braces as set notation, and I'm going to use a very common notation for the sample space. I'm gonna call it capital Omega, but it's often denoted by a capital S, and it could be other things, but those are the two most common notations. Now, both the coin and the die have equally likely outcomes, and that made things easy for us because I wanted to know the probability that when I rolled that die, I got a four. And if the die is shaved or weighted, then it's going to be more complicated than a one sixth. Let's, let's generalize this concept for probability. If I let omega be a sample space of an experiment and let A be an event, if the events in omega are equally likely, then the probability that A occurs is in the number of outcomes in A over the number of outcomes total in the sample space. Let's go back to the die. Gonna roll it one time, it's still fair, it's still six-sided, and I wanna figure out the probability we get an even number. And so I'm gonna let A be the event we get an even number. Now how we write this is A is a set with these curly braces, and I'm gonna put two, four, and six in there. Those are all the even number results. And when I say, what is the probability that A happens? It really means what is the probability that one of the outcomes in A has happened? So this is notation for the outcome is in A. And so the probability we get an even number is written a little more compactly as the probability of the event A happens. And that is three out of six because there's three even numbers out of a total of six numbers, which of course reduces to one half. Okay, we had one coin with two sides and we had a die building up six sides. Now let's get a deck of 52 cards. Randomly select a card out of a deck of 52 cards. What is the probability you will get an ace? So there are four aces in that deck of 52 cards. And if they're shuffled and you are truly randomly selecting, then all of the cards are equally likely to be selected. So the probability of getting an ace is four out of 52. And in our new set notation, I'm gonna let A be the event we get an ace. And so I'm gonna write it as the probability that A occurs is four out of 52. Okay, so now I'm gonna roll two fair six-sided die, and I wanna know the probability that the sum that I see on the die is six. So I'm gonna write out all possible outcomes here as a collection of ordered pairs. So for example, two comma three is the probability I see two on the first die and three on the second die. Now you'll notice that I have a two comma three and a three comma two. Is that really necessary? The answer is no, but it is if you want to take advantage of equally likely outcomes. For example, if I listed the two and the three only once and didn't care about the ordering or which die they were on, then that's okay, but the probability I'd get a three and a three would actually be smaller than the probability of getting a two and a three because I can get a two and a three two ways. You know, these two dice are falling and one of them is a two and one is a three or one of them is a two and the other is a three. And there's actually twice as many ways as getting a three and a three. And I don't have to worry about the probabilities becoming unequal if I just keep track of both dice. So I listed them all out and there are 36 outcomes here. And I have put rectangles around all the ones where the sum is six. So the answer is five out of 36. So let's try to make this a little harder still. I'm going to randomly select two cards out of a deck of 52 cards that have been completely randomized and shuffled. And I wanna know the probability that I'm going to get, so I'm getting two cards, I wanna know the probability that they're both aces. So you might at this point want to say, this is two out of 52 because I grabbed two cards and they're all equally likely but you'd be wrong because there's actually more than 52 ways to choose two cards. I can get an ace of spades and an eight of hearts. I can get an ace of clubs and a three of diamonds. I can get all, there's all sorts of ways to choose two cards out of 52 cards. So actually this denominator of 52 is wrong. And the numerator is also wrong because I can get two aces by having an ace of diamonds and an ace of spades or an ace of diamonds and an ace of hearts or etc. There's many different ways for that to happen. It's not as if there's only two aces in the deck. 
So how many ways can I pick two aces out of that deck? In order to answer these, we're going to need to get a little more machinery. So in the next video, we're going to do some counting, some advanced counting techniques. We're going to talk about combinations and permutations. I hope to see you there.